shall not wither but whatsoever he doeth shall prosper the ungodly are not so but I like the shaft which the wind drive it away mighty God of Daniel me say we love God a road we mother road for God a road but on Sunday evening we out a road Sitting at the foot of the cross at the road. Mighty God of Daniel. If you're crazy for God, shout a glory hallelujah up in here. Me say we both seen a God tonight. We are of attitude in God tonight. I say we love God tonight. So if you have attitude with God and we, and along with your friends loving up on God, God. give me a Holy Ghost praise. Well, because we're going right into praise and worship. Morning. See him God in the morning. Morning. God in the evening, Master God of God. Master God. Mighty God of Daniel, we love God, crazy for God, over God, we didn't know right now, outer road. 
Our topic today, jealousy in the church, bad man of the church, enviousness in the church. Mighty God of Daniel, let your friends and family know that the fire warrior is here. It don't matter what God say, we mother road for God a road. Master God, God. Come on, people. See him, God, a evening. Mighty God of Daniel, out the road with there. Mother road for God a road. Mighty God, a lot of them can't stand your guts. But Master God a God. We don't live to please man. We live to please God. So even if you don't like my guts, I care zero. Take it up to God because I love the Lord. Say my God. He my God. He my God. Oh Lord, he my God. God in the morning, see him God a evening, Lord, Master, God, God. I said, if you can't stand my God, so don't worry about me. Take it up to God and says, God, I don't like her. But let me tell you something. I don't live to please people. I live to please my Father who art in heaven. I sit at the cross every day. I stay away from friends and family and hang out directly with God. <laughs> So it doesn't matter if you don't like me here tonight. Let me tell you something, my daddy love me like that. He my God. Mighty God, he my God. He my God. Me not turn back to me vomit because my daddy love me like that. My daddy don't make me need of nothing. Because mighty God know my heart and my agenda. Me love daddy like that. Me no want to see people. Me go want to see and hear God sit down at the foot. Look upon him day and night and say, Boy, when you come, you take long for come here. Mighty God of Danny, when you're crazy for God and love God, people just can't understand you because they are trying to figure you out, but they just can't because you're in a relationship with a man who loves you. I said, Mighty God, you take so long to come. Where are you? So me hang out right at the foot of the cross, me now move. Because when you ma come, me must know the same come. Mighty God of Daddy, I love God like that. I'm crazy for God. Tiny holding good night to you. Good night, everybody. Me nice, clean, decent, respectful people out the road with them. Burning mirror. We're going to do some praise and worship, then we're going to pray. Then we are going to go right into the message. Let your friends and family know that Divine is on. Share up the video, you know. Mighty God of Daniel, share, share up the videos and let the people know that divine is on. Mighty God of Daniel, Almighty God of Daniel, we come before you tonight. Give you thanks and praise for what you've done, yes, Lord, and what you're about to do. Heavenly Father, Prince of Peace, Great Emmanuel, God, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, author and finisher of my faith. Mighty God, I thank you for a brand new Sunday, New Year Sunday. Lord God Almighty, I could have been in the land of the dead, but because of your grace and mercy. Mighty God, God, you have kept me today. Mighty God, I give you thanks. I give you praise. Mighty God, even though the viruses are flying all over the place, killing people, but God, you have put a shield. Mighty God. Mighty God, you have put a shield of protection around your people. Mighty God of Daniel, you hold us in your arm and covering us, mighty God, away from the virus. Mighty God, I just want to tell you thanks. I just want to tell you I adore you. I know that you are the King of Kings. Yes, Lord, I know that you are the Lord of Lords. Mighty God, I know that you are the conquering lion from the tribe of Judah. Mighty God of Daniel, I know that no devil from the pit of hell can't touch this. Mighty God of Daniel, I know you will cover me. Mighty God, it doesn't matter how old I am. I know that you will cover me underneath these viruses because I know that Master God, a God, see him God a morning, see him God a evening, you never change. Mighty God, you never change. Mighty God, of that you will cover us. Mighty God, you will protect us. Mighty God, you will provide for us even when it seems very difficult. Mighty God, I know you will run in. Mighty God, I know you will run in. Mighty God, I know you will run in. Mighty God, I know you will run in and cover us. I know you will provide for us. Mighty God, even 
even though sometimes it seems very impossible for many people, but God Almighty, I know you will provide for your people in this time and season. Mighty God, I call you. Master God, of God, none before you. Yes, Lord God Almighty, none after you. Mighty God of Daniel, many want to be you. Many want to operate and act like them are you, but them are not you. Mighty God, you are the one general. Mighty God, you are the one Lord of Lords. You are the one King of Kings. Mighty God, we adore you tonight. I just want to tell you that I love you tonight. Mighty God, I love nobody like how I love you. Mighty God, I love no children like how I love you. I love no husband like how I love you. I just love you, Lord, because you heard my voice. I just love you, Lord, because you first loved of me. Mighty God, I just want to give you praise. Yes, Lord, we want to give you honor. Mighty God, we just want to give you praise. Yes, Lord, we want to give you honor. Mighty God, it doesn't matter who don't like us. We don't care because we know you love us with an everlasting love. Mighty God, cut and clear the liver. Loose and set free your people. I ask of thee, mighty God, cover your woman servant tonight, Lord God, as I'm about to bring the word. Mighty God, I'm asking your God to let the, the word fly out I'm a mouth upon speed rapid tonight. Mighty God, let the words be solid tonight. Mighty God, keep me focused tonight. Mighty God, touch this life. I decree, yes, Lord God Almighty, and I declare. Mighty God, touch the life. Any tongue that rises against your woman servant, mighty God, shall go down in judgment. Mighty God of Daniel, I'm asking thee to touch the life. Any finger try to terrorize this life tonight, cramp and paralyze tonight, I decree. Oh God Almighty, and I declare. And any devil that rise up against his life, back to the pit of hell, I decree and I declare. Mighty God of Daniel, cut and clear, loose and set free. I ask of thee in the name of Yahweh, as it is written, so shall it be done. Glory to words and glory to sound and glory to power. Hallelujah. Amen. Our word tonight is jealousy in the kingdom of God. Jealousy in the church. And I'm going to tell you the signs of jealousy. When, it, when, you, when you run into it, you will know the signs what to look for. Mighty God, especially when you are anointed. Because many people can't stand your anointing because they don't have it. So many of them will see you come unusual. Hallelujah. Many of them will see you come unusual and feel as if you have a familiar spirit. But I'm going to tell you tonight, if you have an issue, if you have an issue with how I come to you, take it up to God tonight. Mighty God of Daniel. No tongue that rise against prophetess divine shall prosper because I am who God said I am more than conqueror. If you have a problem with me bringing forth the word, take it up to God. I am not here to please man. I am here to please my father who art in heaven. All the way be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from all evil. Thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mighty God of Daniel. A lot of us don't understand when God sent people to you. A lot of us feel like if it's not them get the word, you don't count. God ain't talking to you. And when you come different and when you come unusual, they think you have a familiar spirit. But I am hearing God say tonight that jealousy is in the church. Bad mind is in the church. Enviousness is in the church. And I'm hearing God said, I'm going to separate. I'm going to take the church out of the churches right now. Right through this pandemic. Right through what we're going through. Now is the time. Is a real Gideon. Because God is about to take the church out of the church. Uh, I'm not sure if somebody hearing me right here, right now, I uh, said this time in this season, we are going through a pandemic season. Now is the time God is about to separate, take the church out of the church. Uh, now is the time that God is about to separate the sheep from the wolf. Uh, hallelujah. So if you see you're in the church uh, and some people running is because God is separating the sheep from the wolf. Uh, I am hearing God. God said, I am separating the sheep from the wolf. I am taking the church out of the churches right now. Are you selected by God? Are you?
are you selected by God? We are in a season where it is a lot of frustration, but you must keep focus. So I am hearing God say, jealousy is in the church. Bad mind is in the church. Enviousness is in the church. And God is doing separation right now. Well, I trust when God call you, when God call us into his kingdom, when God call us into his kingdom, hallelujah, many are called into the kingdom of God, but there is only a few chosen. I'm not sure if somebody hear me tonight. Many of us are called into the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. We baptize and all these things. Uh, taking active part in the church and all these things. Uh, but I am here to tell you many call. But it's only a few chosen. A lot of us baptize, give our hearts to God. Glory be to God. In the week we live a different life from Sunday. Many of us only put on a show on a Sunday morning. I'm going to tell you today, don't play with God. Because when you play with God, God will expose you. When you play with God, he will expose you. A lot of us get baptized and into Christendom, but we are playing a role in church. Midweek, we live a different life from Sunday morning. Sunday morning, we dress to back foot, uh, come out on rostrum, hallelujah, jumping up and down and giving God a praise. And it's only a show we are putting on. God is not into it in this season. If you are followers of God, and if you are children of God, you must be Christ-like. You got to be Christ-like. God not in the hypocrite thing into the church. God is not into the jealousy thing in the church. God is not into the bad mind thing in the church. God is not into the red eye thing in the church. If you are children of God, you got to be Christ-like. A lot of us pretending that we are walking with God. We pretend as if we are walking in the footstep of God. But we only pretend that we are walking in the footstep of God because we have an agenda. We have an agenda, so we pretend as if we are walking in the footstep of God as children of God. But we only do this on a Sunday morning because we pretending to love the Lord and we pretending to spread in the word of God, but we are on an agenda. A lot of us into the church is on a different agenda from what God sent you in there to do. A lot of us, God give you a mandate and you changing it up, doing what you feel like you want to do. But I am here to tell you tonight that God is taking the church out of the church. God is taking the church out of the church. God is separating the sheep from the wolf in this time and in this season. But we still have on Sometimes we don't know what to do. It still falls down back to obedient. Obedient, how can you be a man of God? And how can you be a woman of God? And you step past your church sister. You drive past your church sister on the street and pretend as if you don't know them. Minister Gray. People who you know. People who you're acquainted with. People who goes to your church. You will drive past them on the street. Walk past them on the street. Look into their face as if you don't know them. 
I say the Lord God. A lot of you is only worshippers on Sunday. Pretenders of loving God on a Sunday morning. And after that, you're back to your old thing. God is not into it. Lord, you will make me tonight. If you are a man of God or a woman of God and you're not blessed, you're doing something wrong. What's up, yo? Me not ask you, me telling you, me not asking Christ. I am telling you, if you are a man of God or a woman of God into Christendom and you're crying because you're not blessed, you're doing something wrong. Lord, you make going to tell you again, obedient is the key. Write it down for me. Write it down, obedience. It falls back into obedience. When you are obedient to God, and he gave you a mandate and a specific assignment, remember now I'm taking it and breaking it down slowly for you. I am breaking it down slowly for you when God gave you an assignment. Make sure you ask him how you should do it. Don't just take the assignment and run with it as if you know it all. Make sure you get it clear, Dad, how do you want me to do this? When do you want me to go forward with this? What time, mighty God, should I go forth with this? What date, what hour? Let God give you strict instructions. Mighty God of Daniel, I'm not, I'm not sure if somebody hearing me. Whenever God gives you a mandate, it comes with instructions. It comes with timing up to the very hour. Up to the very minute he tells you how to dress, the dress code, how you should look to bring forth the word. It comes with obedience. A lot of you see me turban, my head come out uh, and spin the roll and dance and you tell yourself, oh, I want to be a woman. That, no. I am obedient to God. If he said turban, I turban. If he said dance, I dance. If he says spin a roll, I spin a roll because God knows what he's doing. I said God know what he is doing. He gives you up to the clothing what to wear. And he tells you the time when to go. Because God knows what he is doing. A lot of us only want to do our own thing. To show off and please the public, the people that, oh yes, God said to do this. No, no, no. You must not care what the public say. You must only care what God say. Because you're working for God and he gives you an assignment and he tells you exactly how to look, how to dress and how to operate. So if somebody wanted to say that you have a familiar spirit, tough luck. Tell them take it up to God. Just tell them report it to God and say, God, did you gave her that because she's acting as if she have a familiar spirit. Take it up to God. Complain to him and let the peep, the man of God or let the woman of God get God's assignment done because you do not know the plan and the arrangement that God has made with that individual. I'm not sure if somebody hear me tonight. Share the videos. Click an amen. Share the videos because I'm getting deep tonight. Real followers of God. The people who have a heart for God. The people who sit at the cross. Sit down and wait on God. They are always blessed. They don't just bless but they look blessed too. Because the covering and the anointing and the blessing of God flows through. When you are obedient into Christendom, 
you will be blessed and highly favored. Whenever you are in Christendom and you find yourself falling in luck, there is something you're doing that's not supposed to be done. You got to get to the foot of the cross and take it up to God and says, God, how can I be serving you and I'm still in luck? And then he's going to tell you stuff. Yeah, man, so church for sweet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Lift up the name of Yahweh here tonight. Once you're serving God and you're in Christendom, you're not supposed to be falling in luck. You're not supposed to be in wants. Once you're in wants and in luck, Something not right. God in the Jealousy is in the church. Enviousness is in the church. In the churches. Bad mind is in the churches. And I'm going to get right there right now. Whenever you go to church and you're an anointed one, you have church brothers that know you well and you have church sisters that know you well and they're stepping past you as if they don't see you. Watch them carefully. I'm going to repeat again. Whenever you are attending church, you have, you have brothers that know you well. You have sisters that know you well in the church. But yet still they are stepping past you as if they don't know you. They are stepping past you as if they don't see you. There is something great in you that they see and they are jealous of it. They are jealous of it. I see a lot of that play out in Zion Revival Church. I circle every church. So I can't tell you everything will go on in there. Because I go and I observe. Don't feel like I don't know the church then. Every, every church me take a view. I go to poor church, I go to rich church, I go to middle class church, I go to Seventh-day Adventist, I go to Sunday church, I go to, I go to every church because I have to observe and report back to God. So a lot of you might see my face into your church and you might be pointing finger at me and wondering who is she. But God sent people to observe you. Oh my God, oh my God. In a lot of revival churches, a lot of corruption going in there. You will have a lot of people that are anointed. A lot of them visiting those churches recently came there with their anointing. And you have other church sisters and brothers that cut them down, directly cut them down to size, flat a ground. Jealousy and bad mind is in the church. But I am here to tell you tonight, God is not into it. So a lot of you that is into Christendom, God is about to fire you. I'm not sure if you're hearing me. God is about to fire you. You are not fit to represent God. You are not fit to be in God's kingdom. So a lot of you that are jealous and red eye and bad mind in the church, God is about to get rid of you one way or the other. Continue to hold on. Do you know why tonight? Do you know why tonight? One way or the other, God is about to get rid of you. A lot of people can't stand your anointing. 
A lot of people cannot stand your blessing. A lot of people can't stand your prosperity. A lot of people can't even stand the clothes that you wear. A lot of people can't stand the hair that you wear. A lot of people can't stand the makeup on your face because they are jealous. So, let me see you your cup, so. Just take it up to God. Take it up to God. I say the Lord God is my son. Take it up. If you can't stand me, come on somebody. Take it up to God. Good morning, sir. You will have people in the church that knows you. Step past you as if they have never seen you before. Why? Because they know you're anointed. They see it from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. They can't stand your guts and they have never spoken to you because they're jealous of just what they see. I say the Lord God is my shepherd. I shall... The first thing they'll do to you in Christendom, if you're a pastor, they'll say you're a fake pastor. If you're a prophet, they'll say you're a fake prophet. Whatever you are, they try to let you feel bad as if they are God. They ain't no God. Let me tell you something. Do not live to please man. Live to please God. They see your anointing and they see your prosperity. And they're jealous of it and they don't know what to do. So they try to sit and see how well they can take you down because heaven belongs to them. I'm telling you. Take it up to God if you're jealous of my anointing. A lot of you pretending as if you're walking with God and you're walking with the devil from the pit of hell. That is why God sent some unusual people to you. God sent some unusual people to spread the word. God sent some unusual people to prophesy. God sent some people who you think is crazy, but they are crazy in God to get God's work done. It doesn't matter what you said about the person. Don't worry about the craziness. Worry about what God is about to do. Worry about the prophecies that is about to fulfill on you. Worry about that and don't worry about the craziness because the craziness Craziness is just at, at, at a minute. Just worry about what God is about to do. A lot of them see her anointing and oh, the first thing they said, oh, God not telling him nothing. God ain't telling him nothing. God don't tell her nothing. Glory be to God. Let me tell you something. If you think I'm crazy, let me stay crazy because I'm crazy. I am crazy in God. So if you can't stand the craziness, take it up to God. Do you love the Lord? Craziness up to God and says, God, how can you put somebody crazy to tell us things? Don't worry about the craziness. Don't watch the craziness. Don't watch the outer man. Watch the inner man. I am only a vessel. God used to bring forth the word. You, 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 you get it wrong. You get it twisted. You get it twisted. I am only a vessel God used. Somebody lift up the name of the Lord up in here because a lot of us think that we are going to heaven but we are going to hell because we are not obeying God. We don't respect God. We don't think what God should, should happen. We just want to do our own thing. So a lot of us going to hell. A lot of us not obedient to God. None at all. God gave us work to do and we don't do it. We do our own thing. But when you see somebody doing the work of God, you find all the fault you want to find. Keep finding the fault because God is about to fire you from his kingdom. We must have respect for God. We must have obedience for God. When you are when you are a daughter or a son of God and God 
place you in a position. And you're getting the job done. Blessing run you down. You just have to be giving it away. Because your store black basket can never empty. So while you're doing God's work. God ensuring that you are blessed. You don't have to tell people that you are blessed. When they look at you, they see blessing. Blessing doesn't mean you have to be rich. Because a lot of us think that blessing you must rich. You must rich and, and have skyscraper, decent swimming pool. You don't have to have swimming pool. And all the time. You don't have to live above your means either. But God bless you above all that you can help others. God bless you that you can bless others. Glory. And I'm going to tell the people tonight. Whenever you attend church. And you have an anointing. And if you are new in the church. Don't show your anointing too much. Don't display your anointing too much. Because people are so jealous of what gave, God gave to you. If them can hold it on and take it, them hold you and take it. And I am telling you tonight as men of God and women of God, don't live to please people, live to please God. So if them even say you're not ready yet, you, 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 just, you just keep moving. While they're talking, just keep on moving. Because you're on a higher level. When I said high level, I mean God is taking it to a higher, higher level. And they can't stand that. They can't stand to see how God taking it to the next level. They hate your gut, but just keep moving. And when you see them and they're stepping past you as if they don't see you, touch them on the shoulder and say, good morning, how are you doing? And you give them a smile and keep moving. And when they're ready to talk, you say, I got to run. Because they will, they will know you. But because of your anointing, they walk past as if they have never seen you. They walk past as if they don't know you. Sometimes to make them feel bad, touch them on the shoulder and say, Hi, Stacy, how you doing? Hi, Patsy, how you doing? How, are you okay, love? Yes. And you move along. You don't have to stand and talk too long. But sometimes when they are jealous of you, they see you. They pretend as if they don't know you because they are jealous of just how God been blessing you. They are jealous of how you're anointing. They're just jealous. But I'm going to tell somebody tonight, when you're jealous of others, just take it up to God. Complain to God. When people are jealous of you and you sit beside them, just just eyes are them sideways and look how they're looking at you bad. They're looking you from your head to your toe, and they don't, don't let them recognize that you're looking at them sideways. Just when they sit next to you or sit a little distance from you, watch how they notice you. And they're not smiling with you either. Their face are upset as if it's, it's you tell them never to buy something good and wear. They sit and they give you an eye. But just sit and put on your glasses. That means they don't recognize you're looking at them. And they look you from head to toe and they can't stand you. And they, some of them don't even know you. But they are jealous of just how you look. Not to mention if you should open your mouth and start delivering the word of God. They're jealous of everything. Many of them talk like you. Everything you say they copy. 
That is indication to tell you when people are jealous of you. Everything that you say, they copy what you say. And pretend as if they came with it first. That's a sign of jealousy too. Glory be to God. A lot of people not hearing from God. They don't have time to sit at the foot of Christ to hear what he has to say. But when you spend all your time sitting at the foot of the Lord, listening and waiting on his next word, and when you bring forth the word, they sit and they copy what you say. They play your videos, they rehearse what you say, and then you hear them go back and repeat the same thing. What you say as if God has told them when they have already copied what you says because you are anointed and appointed and God directly talking to you and they're so jealous of you that even the words that you speak, even the words that you prophesy, even the words that you preach, they steal, they copy it and go with it as if they originated. My soul, my soul. But I'm gonna. I'm here to tell somebody I'm blessed. So I'm gonna. I'll ask you to text. I'm blessed and highly favored by God. I'm blessed and highly favored by God. So even if you know me, and you pretend as if you don't know me, I know within myself that you are jealous of me. And because you're jealous of me, you're pretending as if you have never known. So when you go to church the next time and you see friends that you know and they step past you as if they don't see you, just step past and say, hi, how are you doing? Because within yourself, you know they're jealous of you. Within yourself, you know them envious. Within yourself, you know them bad man up to the pair of shoes you wear. Some of them come and ask, where do you buy that? I like it. I want one. They're so red eye. And all those things are in the church too. All those things are in the church. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They'll see you in a dress. Or a suit. And they're so red eye and jealous up to the suit. They want to know if you bought that one at Mark and Spencer. Where did you buy your suit? Or where did you buy your dress? Up to the hair do you have. They want to know which ear dress I do you hear. Because they want them here see them way too. People are so jealous. Envious in the church. It's not funny. I see people up to the makeup on your face. They want to know the brand you use. I thought it was just in the world. It happens. It happens everywhere. It happens everywhere. In the church, out of the church. Everywhere it happens. It's time for us to stop be jealous of people. It's time for us to be happy for people's anointing. Happy for the bishop's anointing. Happy for the apostle anointing. Happy for the pastor anointing. Happy for the prophet anointing. Just be happy for them and stop jealous of them. You have a next set of people who get saved, go to church, and in no time they want their own church because they are jealous of how the pastor is preaching and collecting offering. They don't want to stay underneath your ministry because they want to have their own ministry that they can collect offering to. That's a form of jealous spirit. That's a spirit of jealousy. That is a spirit of jealousy. 
Whenever you are attending a church, you don't take time out to learn. You want your own ministry to see how well you can collect some offering. That's the spirit of jealousy. And when you accept God as your personal savior, it's not about making offering, making money. It's about the duties of God. A lot of us have the concept of knowing God in a different format. A lot of everybody getting saved now, opening a church. What do you take God for? Is it that you keep selling, selling, selling God? There is not one person who gets saved now not opening a church. Every little crevice and corner there is a new church opening. Everybody wants their own church because they have their own agenda to collect offering and play stylings. But I am here to tell you that God said in this season, I'm separating the sheep from the goats. I am separating the sheep from the goats in this season, in this pandemic. And I am here to tell you that God said, I allow, I allow the devil to have dominion. So right now they make the virus and put it out on you because in this season, in this season, I am here, God say, I am separating the sheep from the goats. A lot of people in Christendom are going to run away out of church. They are not going to stay in there. They cannot stand what is happening and they are not earning. So they are going to run out of it. So now is the time God is separating the sheep from the goat. The follower of God is blessed in a season like this. In this pandemic season, once you are blessed and highly favor and blessing are run your down because you are blessed and highly favor and God placed his hand upon you and said my daughter, God placed his hand upon you and said my son, God placed his hand upon you and said my sister, you won't suffer in this season because I've rest my hand upon you and you shall be blessed going out and blessed coming in. You will be highly favored. So for this season, many people can't find a meal. And in this season, many people, them life sought out. Come on now, somebody give me a Holy Ghost praise up in here. In time of trouble, God said he will provide he will be a, a, a shield in time of trouble. He will protect and provide. So in time of pandemic, you will know the real God who you serve. You will really know the God who you serve. And now is the time you will know if you were serving God or you were serving the devil. Because in a season like this, with pandemic, turmoil, frustration, you will know the God that you serve. Because I guarantee you, once you're serving the true and living God and spend time with him, he will provide. My God will provide for you. You only has to be obedient. <laughs> the real followers of God always blessed. Whenever you are not blessed, you are doing something wrong. That is why I say to you, do not be judgmental and point fingers on others. A lot of us are too judgmental and love to point fingers on others and cast them down as if you are God. You're not God.
A lot of us on Sunday morning, we put on our best to go to church. To sit in the congregation of others. And get up in the most Holy Ghost and the most Holy Spirit. Jump until our clothes drop off while we are in the church. But are we living the life of Christ? That's the question I'm asking you tonight. Are we living the life of Christ? Are we living the life of the Most High? Many of us only put on a show Sunday morning time. And I'm going to tell you tonight that when God put you in a position, place you in a position, you must not move. Because a lot of us don't like to join line. We like to come and see people in long line and we bypass everybody and find our way up at the top and get served before the rest of people who stand up out there for hours. But I'm here to tell you tonight that in God's kingdom it don't work like that. If you are in the line, stay in the line until it's your turn. Stay in your position in the line until it's you next. Because if you tend to jump the line, because you know somebody up at the top for pay your money, to put you up there to get you. In Christendom, it don't work like that. You have to hold your position in the line until it's you next. And when you sit into that line, sometimes you sit into the line for years. Because you've been in the line for more than one year, two year, three year, four year. And as it turns to the five year, when it's your time, you get fed up and say, I can't bother. And it's your time now. If you are in the line, patiently stay in the line and patiently stay at the cross. Patiently stay and talk to God. Keep dialogue with God. Because if God wants you to go up the top, up the ladder quick enough, he knows how to move you up there on speed rapid. But otherwise, I'll stay into the line because God wants you to stay in the line slowly but surely growing. <laughs> God wants you to be someone who is dedicated to him. When you dedicate your life to God, you know what dedication means? Do you know what dedication means? When you dedicate your life to God, nothing don't matter to you. When you dedicate your life to God, you are at the feet of God day and night. He favored you. Because every look him look, you sit on him foot. Every turn him turn, if him not look, with him step by you. So any little thing him have him just a give you, give you, just a give you. All when you not expect it, him just a give you. Because you're damn foot. So him just favor you, constantly favoring you. Giving you stuff all the time. Providing for you all the time. Because you're at his feet. You and him a par. When you ain't got a par, you can't in need of nothing. When you and master got a par, you can't in need of nothing. Because you and him a hang out. So as him look around at you, when he wake up at you, everything at you. So right now the blessing had double up on you, the anointing had double up, the favor had double up, the higher level coming up because you are hanging out with God. And him love you and you love him, so any little thing him put you to the next level. So sometimes when you see some pastor by yacht, by plane, by everything what them want, don't be jealous of them because they hang out.
at the foot of the cross with God day and night. So don't be jealous of them getting all what they have needed because they hang out with God. Them and God are par. So when them get the vehicle and them get the big house, them say, Dad, I need a plane. He said, you need a plane to go other places to spread the word. He said, yes, Dad. I said, okay, don't worry about it. I'll get, let you get that. You ain't got a par. You ain't got a hang. People does not understand the mystery of God. When you hang out with him, you separate yourself from family. You separate yourself from friends. You separate yourself from the phone. And hang out with God. What do you think? As you open your mouth and says, Dad. He said, you don't have to shout, I'm here. I know exactly what you want. Here it is. Hallelujah. Somebody lift up the name of God up in here. So now that you are dedicated to God in his kingdom. A lot of people jealous of you now because God look out for you more than everybody else. People jealous of everything you do. All when you don't do them, not them just eat you. You don't have to do them anything, them just can't stand you. And God will give you the eyes to see it. And God will give you the spirit of the discernment to say, take away yourself from the one day. Take away yourself from the one day. Don't go around the one day, because evil them. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When God is, when you are hanging with God, he shows you everything. He said, I want to don't go there. The over the yard, they don't go back over there. The one they don't hang with the one. When the one they call you, block them. <laughs> When you hang with God, God make you extraordinary. All the secrets in the book he reveals to you. All the enemies that surround you, he show you them. You see, the gift of discernment, it's one of God's highest gifts. A lot of people don't understand giftings. The gift of discernment is one of God's highest gift to man. When he can say that one, come on, move away from him. God give you the eye to can look at them and see everything, the evil in them. God give you the eye and the ear to ear. They don't like you. So the gift of discernment, extraordinary gift. A lot of you call it reader. It's time for you to stop calling it reader. The title of it is the gift of discernment. So a lot of you boil on the thing and texting people, oh, can you give me a read? Nothing on him, a read. It's the gift of discernment. You can see what others can't see. And you know about others' life that they don't even know about themselves. It's a powerful gift. So I don't bubble down my gift and talk about me want to read. There is no such thing as me want to read. It's the gift of discernment. One of the most powerfulest gifts God could have ever give to you. Can't boil it down. And people will know your giftings. And try to see how well they can test you on your giftings. A lot of you text me in box. Can I get a read? Me can't get a read. Don't text my inbox about can I get a read. I am on a high level. I am on a high level. I am on a high level. So don't ever text my inbox. 
Can I get a read? Mother. Don't even call me mother. I'm not your mother. Don't even call me mother. I'm not your mother. I'm not your mother. I am God's daughter. The daughter of the Christ. The daughter of Yahweh. So you don't text and say, can I get a read, mother? I am God's daughter. And if my father says no, it's no. Find somewhere else, go and ask for a read. We are taking it to the next level now. You ain't gonna boil it down to give me a read. The mother bad panting round us. I'm God's daughter. So I have his bloodline. Because I have his bloodline. I have all what he had. Because when my father was on earth. He heals the sick. And he raised the dead. And he helps a lot of people. So if I am his daughter. I have the same giftings. And never you disrespect people. And asking them for a read no more. People who has the gift of discernment are very high people. They are very high people. They are higher than the commissioner. They are higher than the government. Gift of discernment are very high. Don't play with people with giftings. A lot of people have giftings until they don't even know what to do with it. They just do it as fun. So never you text people, can I get a read? A lot of you on the live texting, can I get a read? Mother, I'm not your mother. I'm my father's child. I am God's anointed one. I am on a different level right now. You don't text and say, can I get a read? Those, that was last year, 2020. You tried it and you may get away with it. But for not 2021, you won't get away with that one. We are going higher level right now. I am God's daughter. And I must walk into the authority of God. A lot of people jealous of people's anointing They will text you Can I get a call? I need to talk with you They don't need to talk with you They just want to catch your voice On the phone They just want to see you On a video call to see how well They can tamper with you <laughs> So you have to be careful when you are gifted because people will come on the general ship as if they want to talk with you but deep down they are so jealous of you they try to get you on the phone to see how well they can hurt you but when you sit at the cross of God hang out with God God will say not that one what is she calling you for block her you think God play God is not someone that plays glory be to God well I trust So I hope this message has been a blessing to you tonight. The spirit of jealousy that is in the church. So if you attend church and you're powerful and you're not 
recognizing to your church. Don't sit on the giftings of God. Find a way out how you're going to spread the word of God. When God give the gifting to you, get it the job done. Because a lot of time you'll sit in the church from your 20 year old until it becomes 90. And you have never get the opportunity to get God's job done. Now you have a lot of social media. Take it up to God. Get the job done. Go on social media and get God's work done. It doesn't matter what they want to say about you. They never gave you the opportunity to do it. So do it on social media. Because a lot of people want to remix when God give you a word, they want to remix and cut it down and boil it down and tell you how you should put it across and how them don't want this and they don't want that. Do it the way how God tells you to do it. Because if God tell you to do it a certain kind of way, it might look crazy to them, but God is doing it for his glory. Don't worry about them say you're crazy. When they say that you're crazy, just say, I'm a mud in a God. Out a road. God likes that. God love it. Did you remember when Christ was on earth? And when he walks the earth and he healed the sick and raised the dead, they decide they want to kill him. And when they put him on the cross to kneel him on the cross, he said, well, if you are the son of God, save yourself. That to show you how cold people were from back then. After they sit and see the man going through, Christ going through, healing the sick, raising the dead, that was a spirit of jealousy. That is the reason why they kill him. That was the spirit of jealousy. So they said, okay, since you said you are the son of God. And you raise so much dead. And you heal so much sick. When we put you on this cross and kneel you. Take yourself off then. No? Take yourself off. So from back then, people were jealous of God, much less us. People were red eye and jealous because he came with his anointing and helping the poor and the needy and healing the sick and used, to, and used fish and bread and feed a multitude. They, they sit and they observe and they laugh and then they plan to kill that is why I hide from people. I don't want to know people. I don't want to see people. I stay away from people. I just like doing what I'm doing through my phone and that's it. I don't want to meet people either. Because a lot of them are jealous of people. Just simple jealous of you, what God gave to you. Minister Ray. A lot of people just jealous of your anointing that God gave to you. And when the Almighty was on earth, it's the same thing they did to him. After he did all the good for the people, they turned around and nailed him on a cross. And said, well, if you are that powerful, save yourself. I say the Lord God is my shepherd. So I'm telling you people, you must be very careful. Jealousies in the churches. Nobody wants to wait in a line until God said it's your time. Everybody wants to be on the front. Everybody wants to be at the front. Everybody wants to be pastor. Everybody wants to be this. Nobody wants to stay in the line until it's their turn. And it all boils down to the money. They just want to open and run church because they might look money. And I saw it go. 
So the next time you go to church or you go anywhere and people pretend as if they don't know you, take it with a smile. Because you know within yourself, they are jealous of your anointing. They are jealous of how you look. They are jealous of how God blessing you. They are just jealous. And you have a lot of people in the churches pretend as if the world are built around them. Them is all that I use nobody. I'm not sure if somebody hearing me tonight. I said you have a lot of people in the church who pretend as if the world built around them and where you are concerned, you are nobody. So I want to know if God has given them a contract to show off and play as if the world built around them and then you is nobody. And if they were anointed as your little finger, that would have been good. Not even the little finger you have on your hand, they are not anointed as much as you, the smallest finger you have. But yet still they dressed up and come out and tear down the rostrum and collect a whole heap of offering as if the world built around them. And you are sitting in the congregation and you are more powerful than them who are sitting on the rostrum and say that they are pastors and ministers of the gospel. Most time that is why God beat some of them. God beat them and take them out. I'm telling you, this, this season, God is about to fire a lot of people who claims that they are prophesying and they are proclaiming the work of God. God is about to fire some of them. And the way how God fire them, they don't like it because sometimes God allow the sickness to overtake them and kill them. So you guys better be careful how you deal with God and how you deal with his children inside of your churches. And um, let me tell you something. You better change your mindset where churches are concerned, where pastors are concerned, where congregation is concerned. You better change your mindset because God is about to separate the sheep. Uh, hallelujah from the wolf this season. And Zion, I need to talk with Zion tonight because I get a word for Zion. And I am talking about revival churches worldwide. There are not supposed to be two types of Zion. There is only be, be, supposed to be one type of Zion and is the clean Zion. God loves the gate of Zion. And a lot of you take the Zion church and do it occultism in there. A lot of you take Zion and do it occultism. You're not supposed to be using Zion for occultism. People supposed to come to you who are sick and afflicted and God has already installed in you powers and blessing that they can get better. Hallelujah. So I am telling you tonight that you be careful what the type of thing you go perform in Zion. God is not into the occultism. And in the churches today, God is picking out the sheep from the goats. Hallelujah. And I know I'm not sure if you're understanding me when I'm saying God is about to pick the sheep. God is picking the church out of the churches right now. A lot of us play church for too long. 
A lot of us play churches for too long. A lot of us, the only time we are in need and we call God is only when we are dying on our deadbed. We calling upon God for mercy. It's very good. A lot of us only recognize God when we are sick. A lot of us only call upon God when we are in luck. A lot of us don't spend time around God, point blank and period. We only want God when we are in trouble. A lot of us only call upon God when we are in trouble. And it's time for us to hang out with God all the time. It's time for us to be the best friend of God, the daughter of God, the son of God all the time. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. A lot of us, God called us. For specific purposes. And God know why he put us into that position. For, and for that purpose. So if you have the gift of discernment, don't hide your gift. Don't hide your gift and scared of it. It's something that you're scared of some, most times. I used to never like it. I, I can see things too much. I used to never like it. But it reached at a, a point and a time when I, I can't hide it no more. And a lot of people will not rate you either. You will have the gift and they don't rate you. And they go everywhere. They go everywhere to get little help. Spend out all their money to get little help. And when their money done and them broke, them still no get no help. And after them broke, them find you. Let me repeat again. I said a lot of people will know your giftings. They will know that you are very good at your giftings, but them go on like them don't rate you. And them go, everybody go spend out their money. I look like a help. And when their money done and them broke, spend them big how much a thousand elsewhere. And them still sit down into the position that they are. The only time them know to run and draw for you and terrorize your phone is when them broke. And when them broke, them I beg your prayer. Them I beg you to tell them where I go on. And them broke and them spend all their money around others who take their money and con them. But I am here to tell somebody, don't text my phone. Don't WhatsApp my phone. My phone is not for idle or idlers. God is taking me to the next level. You want to talk with me, text on Facebook.
Facebook is for free. I give you the word of God free. But when it comes to my phone, don't terrorize my phone. Where you spend all your money, go back there and let them know that you need your money back or they need to do what they said they can do. I hope you hear me now. You go back where you spend all your millions and your thousands of dollars. And let them know you either get back your money or they do what they promised to do. Don't text Prophet Divine or WhatsApp or call my phone terrorizing me. Only eight people awarded this year and it's only eight people support my feeding program, support my charity. Only eight people support my charity this year. And I have 1,000 and I have 500 and I have how many people follow my life every day, every morning, getting prior. And it's only eight person support my charity. And a lot of you live abroad. It not take 300 and a pack of barrel. With food to give away to poor people. You get every break, you get every blessing, but a lot of you just mean. And a lot of you just jealous. You just want to sit on the live and take all the blessing you can take and cut your tongue and bust a laugh. As if you're dealing with an idiot. I am telling you that God is not into it for 2021. God said higher level. I am not a supervisor no more. I am manager. In 2020, I was supervisor. In 2019, I was just a regular worker. But now, 2021, God put me to the manager position. So I am the manager... And God is the boss. So I work for God. I have to go to him and talk with him because he is boss and I am manager. So he's taking me to the next level. So the next time when you text, don't text mother. Beg your reading. We're going to higher level now. Higher, higher level. Look how much people dying from COVID-19. And my father has given me the cure for it. I've been helping a lot of people 2020 with COVID. With the medicine that I have. How much of you ministers of the gospel has gotten the cure for COVID? Talk with me now. How much of you ministers of the gospel have gotten the cure for COVID? Not one. Not one a year. But yet still you would want to push me down in the barrel. Play as if I, am, I don't exist. But in the same breath, God has given me an anointing. I find the cure for COVID-19 even more than the vaccine. Because you don't need a vaccine for COVID. You don't need a vaccine for COVID. The people who I worked with last year, right, they're healed, delivered, loose, and set free and back to work. May God continue to bless them. Because when they came to me, they came to me with lifting their faith to God. God in the evening, you call these things anointing. So because I sit at the foot of the cross and bada bada God and said, So you know, give me nothing for COVID. Him just say, All right, see ya, but it's not something for your publicize. 
No for them people where I did me could have helped them. But me not lie, them would have to pay me. I could have sit down at the hospital when the patient them come and them have a room where them give me for going in and I start deal with them kids. Simple match, you know. Or I just make the medicine and sell them. They don't have to pay me. So a lot of who die, they could have avoid dying. But it boils back down to a thing when you rate things. When God was on earth, you never rate him neither. You never rate him. The man full of anointing, and you never rate him. You only sit down and eat the fish and bread, as always. And you mock him and jeer him and use him. Them man, the mystical, him dead and risen. And I'll never see him back. Never see him back. Oh and right now, I sit down and cry and says, God, COVID is here. Can you help us? I'm telling you today, he, he allowed the devil to have dominion. He allows the devil to have dominion over you. I know somebody hates me tonight. When I speak like this, somebody hates me tonight. When I look at you and says, God allowed the devil to have dominion. I know a lot of you hate me. Because I'm telling you what my father is doing. So right now he's shuffling the churches. Taking the sheep from the goat. Now is the time he's doing. He's, he's, he's choosing. Many are called. But I'm sorry to tell you. It's only a few. Has been chosen. Only a few has really loved the Lord. I love the Lord. He heard my voice. He picks me up. When I was down. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. A lot of us don't love God. We only pretend as if we love. We only pretend as if we love the Lord. We don't. I love the Lord. I'm crazy about him. Every day I cry. I say, when you coming? You taking so long. So every day I stay at the foot of his, the cross. Every day I sit at his feet. I say, when you coming? You're not coming? You're taking too long. They're, they're operating, creating havoc here. Come. He said, divine if I come. The hurt will be in trouble. And I hate to see people die. Because I'll be coming back with volcano. So just let me slowly do what I'm doing. Because it won't be a nice sight. But every day I cry. I said, when you coming? You're taking so long. I don't like it here anymore. I really don't like it here. No more. I've been never like it here anyway. I just live here because I'm here. But I generally never like it here. I always want to go around the Father. Hang with Him. I just never like it here. You know how a lot of people cry and beg God not to let them die? I'm not like that. I always never like it here on earth. 
I always ask him, when are you coming? You take so long. And he will tell you, I'm not ready yet. Close revelation for me. And when you finish out, you will know when I'm coming. Because I will give you all indication and sign. So right now, I am a part of closing the revelation for my father. So you better be careful how you talk to me. You better be careful how you disrespect me. Because when you do, I make a report to him. And if I cry, he'll get upset. And when God gets upset, it's no good sight. But every day I ask him, when you come, and he says, listen now, divine, I've already allowed the devil to have dominion. Just, just take time with me. I'm coming. Just take time. Just don't worry about nothing. You only want to know that you're not in arm's way. You only want to know you're not hungry. You only want to know that you're not suffering. Nobody for you are suffering. Just don't worry about it. I'll come, but just take time with me. I'm coming. Just let, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have the devil of dominion over them now. Because I make report daily. Everything you guys do, I make report. I says, God, they use you a lot here. Why are they selling you so often? What's wrong with these people? He hates that. My father hates that. He don't like it. A lot of you may be looking at me and say, how can she ask God when he's coming? She crazy? I'm not crazy. You crazy. Because you want to stay here. I hate it here. You didn't look at me and recognize I'm an angel? I am in human form, but I'm an angel. So angels doesn't like it here. Angels do not like it here. But I'm only in human form. But my soul is angelic. So we are going to close the program out now. And I'm just, I just want to let you know that the spirit of jealousy is in the churches. So whenever you attend the church and decided to join the church and all these things, be careful, especially into the Zion churches. The, the, the spirit of jealousy is inside there. And when you go there with your anointing and the mission, they will cramp you. Just find a normal society church to attend. Give your heart to the Lord. Get yourself active in the church. And help others for the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Almighty God, Daniel, I thank you, Father, for the word. Mighty God, I thank you for having me being obedient to you. Father, I thank you for having me not watching or listening what people say about me. Mighty God of Daniel, I thank you for the people who joined the life tonight, Lord God Almighty. I thank you for the souls that are here on the live want to give their hearts and their lives to you tonight, God. I'm asking the God at this time to touch every soul that has been empty. Touch every heart needs to be filled with your love tonight, God. Mighty God, we thank you for the word, God. We thank you for the people. Mighty God, I thank you for really keeping me focused tonight, Lord, to spread your word. Mighty God, it's not about me me, myself, but it's all about you, Lord. Mighty God, if I've sinned against thee, I ask thee at all, give
given time for forgiveness. Mighty God of Daniel, touch every person on the life, every soul on the life tonight. People who want to give their heart to you tonight, they can do so wherever they are. Mighty God, I'm asking the oh God to ride in with your quickening power. Do for your people what they just can't do for themselves. Mighty God, have them sitting at the cross, sitting at your feet, praying and asking you to deliver them. Lord, I ask of thee in the name of Yahweh, as it is written, so shall it be done. As you thought us to say, our Father, who art in heaven, all the way be thy name, thy kingdom come. Will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> It was a pleasure serving you, my people. It was a pleasure having you on the live tonight. And I will be on live tomorrow morning for our devotion, our prayer. You know, we're going to have an hour of our devotion tomorrow morning. So get your water together, your first glass, everything for tomorrow morning. We'll be out early in the morning. So it was a pleasure serving you. I must say thanks to all of you who have joined the live, who spent time to listen to the word of God, who spent time to listen to what I have to say, who pick their part out and address it to their lives. And as I told you, jealousy, the spirit of jealousy is in the church. Please be observant as you go to church. Observe a lot. And I hope that God will bless you to the week. And I hope that God's loving face will shine upon you and bless and keep you, guide you, protect you from the virus. Remember that I love you always, but God really love you more. Take care of yourself. Catch you tomorrow morning at 6 in the morning. If you can't be good, be careful. Our Father, who art in heaven, all the way be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise be to God. And if you are in God, it, now is not the best time for you to leave. Once you love the Lord and you're serving him all your life, now is not the best time to get frustrated and leave. Because now is the time he's doing a shift. He's taking away the sheep from the goat. He's taking the church out of the churches. So now is the best time to get yourself in line because God is making his selection now. And if you get work from God to do, now is not the time to sit on the work. Now is the time for you to go out and get the job done because God pour his spirit upon all flesh in this season. So if God gave you something to do, I'm telling you right now as I pray, uh, let me tell you, go and get the job done. Get yourself a phone and start doing the work of God. You don't must have to do it into your church. You don't must have to get the opportunity to do it. Uh, but anyway, it means necessary. Get the job done. It doesn't matter what people want to say about you. It doesn't matter how people want to criticize you don't watch people that want to criticize you just go and get the job done even if they want to call you crazy just when they call you crazy or mad just say yes i mad in a god just get god's work done because he's separating the sheep right now from the goat hallelujah amen <laughs> A lot of people at this time is going to feel a, a, a spirit to do something for God. And once the spirit coming upon you, try to get the job done. Don't wait for your pastor to give you the opportunity to do it. Just get yourself a phone. Just get yourself a tablet and start the work of God. Because God is 
pouring his spirit upon all flesh in the last season. God is choosing now. God is choosing. Make sure when God chooses, you are one of them who he chooses. I am telling you right now, once you get the spirit to do something, you better get the job done because God pour his spirit upon all flesh. It doesn't matter what the public saying right now. Oh, yes, it is God time. So we have a lot of false prophets. You get the job done. It doesn't matter what people mouth want to say. False this and false that. Let God be the judge. Don't watch people. Watch what God is about to do into your life. Get the job done. Glory be to God. A lot of people like to be judgmental. They like to just judge you. They like to talk as if they are the secretary of God. They talk as if they are God's mouthpiece. They talk and they try to put you down as if they are the only one God chose. I'm going to tell you something. I hear God said, I am pouring my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Worldwide, God's spirit is upon all flesh. So once God's spirit is upon you, you're going to get the encouragement. You're going to get the spirit to do something. So if God giving you job to do, go get the job done. <laughs> In the middle of the night. How dare you get the work to done and then you want to return to your own vomit. You must be stupid. When you get the work to do, go do it. You don't have to go back nowhere to do it. Stay right where you are and do it. You're stupid. Now is the time God is choosing the sheep from the goat. And God is, uh, hallelujah, God is uh, taking the church out of the churches. Many call, but few chosen. And when you do wrongs, don't take the church as an escape route. Because if you take the church as an escape route, God will kick you out of it. There is no way I am going to go back to my vomit. It's been a long time I've been serving God. But this year is my third year anniversary of being prophet. And no devil from the pit of hell can do me or say this or that for me to stop. I'm in a learning process. And I rehearse every day. I am in a learning process and I rehearse every day. I may not as on point as you where the word and the scriptures are concerned. I may can't line up the Bible the way how you do it. But that is why I sit at the cross, the foot of the cross, and ask that what I must do. So every day I read a scripture out of my head. I may don't know it as good as you. But I am rehearsing because I love God. I love everything about God. I don't have no time to look behind me. I don't have no time to run back out there and say I forget something. I'm comfortable where I am at. Comfortable at the foot of God. Enjoying his company too. I love you, everyone. We got to go now. Love you, love you, love you.
Good night, dear. I'll do it now, I mean. La Chen Ro, hi, how are you doing? Melinda Campbell. We're going to close you out with Master God of God. So whenever the enemy come in like a flood, you just say, dance and have attitude and say, God of God, round here. We're closing out with Master God of God. God in the evening. Master God of God. Masa God of God God in the morning God in the evening Masa God of God We closing out with God of God Out a road See him God of morning and see him God of evening Turn back to my own vomit once me say me sit down in a Christendom, me now move. Anything me a bear, me a bear it and go choke God a God. And his word shall not come unto him void. Now turn to me vomit. A we say God, a we say outer road, a we say mother road for God a road. Many people don't like how I bring forth the road, because I bring forth the road street style. style. I give it to your street style so the good, bad, and the indifference can understand when I talk. I say, we say outer road, God a road, mother road for God a road. Street style, street talk. So everybody can understand this. Uptown, downtown, round town, everybody understand when me there. Church no boring again, you know. Church no boring again. Because the young warriors, them come and warming it up. Church can't boring again. God has no problem with it, so why would you have a problem? God love when me say out a road. God a road. And we say God a road. And we mother road for God a road.